all right so quick update on the shoe frames this is the last batch that has been sent out um sorry i haven't done any updates recently but i was very very busy welding them up we sold all of them and i've decided to pretty much weld them almost all together in two batches this is the last one they are complete or say almost complete this is the reason why this tube the stainless tube is here i have to machine all small pieces to go in here there's a space to go inside the soup frame so when you're gonna tie it up to your frame to your chassis these two don't collapse where well, they won't collapse them but you know you may bend them tiny bit and we don't want that uh, you know a perfect solution is to have these spaces here so i'm gonna have to machine all of them and there's few of them so yeah soup frame is already they all good this is steve's one i think he's gonna feed his one today because i'm finishing his uh, arms now before actually no after uh after after <laughs> i have to specify something um arms when it comes to arms we have the super fitted on the mr2 vr6 tube we we're building for sale and i fitted the original arms the original arms are like this it wasn't my intention it was temporary but I was like, you know what, even if these were brand new, not rusted, I just I just couldn't do it. I mean, look at this thing. It's just, no, with such a nice soup frame now, because this, this soup frame is, the size being obviously strong and, and, you know, very rigid. You don't need any more braces uh, to your to chassis on the back to keep everything in place. To me, in my eyes, they look awesome. They look very nice. Um, again, not everyone might share my opinion. Um, you can't please everyone in the world, you know, for some people the standard Supreme is going to be good enough, for some people all the Supreme is on the, on the market are going to be good enough, for some other people these Supremes are going to be the ones they want, perfect, if this is just another option on the market for them matter, which is good in my opinion, but this is a sacrilege, uh, you wouldn't feel one of these, so obviously you have the aftermarket arms this style and this is not m2 arms but this style arms obviously they you know they fit they they okay they might still mig welded uh, mass produced mass produced they have um rubber inserts in them you know yeah that's definitely better than the standard one and definitely acceptable but not quite what we wanted this maybe is a little bit exaggeration, a little bit too much, but I wanted something that matches the soup frame. So we came up with the idea of my own arms. And uh, these arms now are completed. We finished the, all, the whole things. They could be in production, they could be ordered. They're not in mass production yet. I build them set by set or two sets each time, but we can now uh, take orders on them. But I want to show you, before I'm going to weld them up, I'm going to show you how they are actually produced because I'm hiding nothing. Same with the Supreme, same with, the, with anything else we've done for these cars or the conversions, 1.8, VR5, VR6 Turbo and all that stuff. Everything is very transparent for us. And um, there is a reason why this stuff is the way it is because I had, well, you know the story, I had my MR2 and I wanted to do K20 swap, which turned out to be not as good as I was hoping. And then, a few jokes, it became 1.90 Di, and it was absolutely awesome. And everything started, now this is VR5. VR5 Turbo with DSG gearbox, which I don't have a time to finish. God knows when I'm gonna put my hands on it. VR6 Turbo, six speed manual for sale. Uh, but however, what, my ideology since the beginning, so from the engine swap, which engine, the position of the engine, the choice of the gearbox, the way I construct the engine mounts and everything. Because I stopped building custom stuff for customers and concentrated on only one chassis, the, the MR2 Mark III, I wanted everything to be absolutely perfect and absolutely the way i want it to be on my own car and then as a consequence of that having the product on the market not a not an easy <laughs> task trust me ask steve we went through a lot of troubles 
to have a quality products on the market which already is saturated with products which usually come from China and, and, and they're fairly cheap for what they are. It's, it's not an easy task. But there is one thing. I think our products do stand out because we care more about the looks, more about the, you know, just trying to be as good as possible, not just to sell the market, to sell the product on the market, sorry. I mean, construct one of these, believe me or not, is a long time. If you see how much they cost, they're not cheap, but there isn't much profit on them. Trust me. And I mean, anyone who does this for job, for work as a construction, as a manufacturer, or as a, as a fabricator, he can confirm this. If you look at them, close them. Um, we actually finalize them with the, with the inserts. These are the four points you usually bolt, um, you engine mount, you rear engine mount. And the idea was to have them in two types, some of these and some of them that you bolt your engine mount just on that surface, which is plenty, is more than enough. But we don't want to settle for plenty and just good enough. So, yeah, these inserts are machined, inserted inside and well inside the, 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 the subframe. So when you grab your engine mount, you grab it from the whole subframe all the way through. In that case, uh, there's another benefit besides the strength is that if you snap a nut, a bolt, or cross-thread it, no big deal, just put another one. There's nothing to, you know, refread, there's nothing to drill out, it's just, there's nothing to break, it's very simple. And this is the ideology we used to do, we used to do, um, we used to use for building race cars. You don't build the stuff to work now, you build the stuff to work now, but also to be very easily um, serviceable and fixable in a race, you know, just think ahead how this stuff is going to work. And also this is the reason, one of the reasons we choose a stainless because this, these are eternal sufferings. Once you put it on, if you're not going to break it in some very bad accident, this is not going to break, period. And it's never going to rust. So, simple as that. So, let me get to you with the sufferings. Now, this is... I'm boldly gonna say they look kind of like a jury to me. And I approach them almost like construction a jury. You know, the fabricators, especially the ones who take weld, some some of people, some of these guys, they take a massive pride in, in, in the work. I do as well. Fuck it, I'll say that it's it's there's no shame. If you look at the colours of the soup frame, the soup that this this one soup frames, they have one colour. These have different colors. There's a bit of orange there. There's a bit of um, purple and blue. You choose these colors. You choose this kind of theme uh, because it all depends how you know how you use your argon shield. You know, and I take massive pride of this, and I treat them almost almost like a like a jury. I know it's a bit bold, it's a bit too much saying as a jury because they're not, but uh, you, you get my meaning. I don't know how else I can express that. Now these arms. These are um, under construction. Obviously, I want to show you how they are built because once they're welded... Now, this one here is just a prototype. It's been welded very quickly, overheated. doesn't matter. I was like, I don't care how it looks like. It's a prototype. never going to leave the workshop. So they're not as they're going to be finally. But it shows you that once this is welded, you're not going to see anything under the welds. Obviously, the welds are going to mask a lot of imperfections. You know, both ends, even here, loads, nothing to see here. So I want to show you before this is welded up. We ran a few, few prototypes until we achieved perfection in my eyes. Everything is perfect. There's nothing to hide, nothing not to show. Both ends of these pipes are machined. Now, what is the reason to machine these pipes, there's no reason. Once this is welded, if that was not machine just cut with the angle grinder, will you be able to tell? You will not. If this side was a machine just cut with the with the with the angle grinder, would you be able to to tell? You would not, because once it's welded, it's hidden, it's fused. 
You know, this is the jig that keeps everything in place. This is the toe arm on the jig for the production. So we can set up all the lengths and the machining and everything. This is inserted in there. This is machined to go in there precisely. Both sides. Would you ever tell this was machined once it's welded? Absolutely not. But you know. And that is a difference that makes, that makes the biggest of the difference in my head. When you order a good um, wristwatch, like one of these expensive ones, you know, you don't see the mechanism inside, but you know that there was a lot of work going into it, a lot of precision work. And that's what you're paying for. I'm not comparing this stuff to the watch. Absolutely not. There's no such a thing. It's just a matter to explain what I'm doing, why I'm doing this, and to show you what you're paying for if this is the same stuff you want to go for um it's definitely the stuff that i want to you know these are exactly the arms and the machining and the quality of the product i want on my car i would like to produce for me to be 100 percent happy no compromises and we do invest a lot of time and money into this stuff so just want to share just want to show you these are now in production and with everything else, my arms and my, well, if you take, if you take the, you know, these, uh, if you take these, I don't know if you can see it, um, Jesus, if you take these, you know, all of this stuff is made in the same way. Uh, sorry for the camera angle. It's made in exactly the same way. We went through a lot of prototyping, a lot of work, a lot of welding, a lot of laser cutting, uh, different companies for the laser cutting, but now everything is settled and now it's just production line. Um, so beside all of this, yeah, we're taking all this already. These are two sets being made. One of them is for, actually for Steve, he's going to probably put them on tonight. Um, besides this, now we pretty much um, trying to improve all the production line. So enough with the development, we've done pretty much everything. There are a couple of things that we're trying to speed up, um, trying to speed up with the wiring looms um, because again, it's, uh, I'm trying to get them a little bit cheaper and easier and quicker to build because it takes me a little bit too long. Um, there's a cold uh, air induction, uh, you know, the long pipes and this pipe. We're going to change that to something a little bit cheaper but as effective. Um, so, only a couple of things, and now we're trying to speed up all the production lines. So, there's going to be less and less and less delays between the order and the product being shipped to you. And uh, essentially, there's going to be no delays whatsoever. It's going to be literally immediate because we're aiming to have the stock on the shelves within two or three months, um, no later than three and a half, four months, hoping. But then we see it's, uh, it's a lot of work because this is just, you know, a little part of the, all the production stuff. So, but now we're in the, in the part of optimizing everything and uh, trying to make everyone happy. Mm. All right, I'll see you soon.